First up, tell us a little bit uh, how you came to Asbury Automotive and the company. Tell us about the company's history. We are the um, sixth largest automotive retailer in the nation. Uh, we have 81 dealerships. Uh, we're what I would call a super regional. So we're in the southwest, the midwest, the south, and the east coast. And our strategy has been to create uh, density in our local markets uh, to create a competitive edge in these markets. Your, your annual revenues are what? Last year, uh, is the uh, lowest annual revenue we've had. The entire industry is, has been significantly off. Our revenues were about three and a half, three point seven billion last year. The year before that, there were about four and a half billion. So that's how much the, the market has been off. Tell us about how you grew with the company. I had some friends that uh, were with Asbury. They had a plan to take this company public, and they had some needs in Arkansas. Uh, I was ready to, to re-enter the business. I didn't know if I wanted to buy another dealership or, or what I would wanted to get involved in. So uh, Deborah and I moved to Arkansas. We kept our home here in, in Duluth and, and repaired that, that uh, group of dealerships. And then when Mr. Nally wanted to retire here in Atlanta with my background and living here, it made it a nat natural move for Asbury to uh, uh, want me to operate both of these platforms. Uh, and so from that particular standpoint, um, the board asks if I would want to be the CEO. Of Charles, would you describe yourself as being more uh, concentrated into the automobile industry or the transportation industry? I see myself really uh, as being in the people business. Um, we, we happen to sell cars or provide transportation, but it, it's always about the customer or, or it's always about our employees. The thing that always attracted me to this industry is I love people and I love cars. And so the combination of those two things is, is for me, what's so exciting about it. So I, I really view myself personally, we're in, we are in the people business. What uh, pointers would you uh, present to this audience this morning to help those that are, that are in the uh, startup phase or those that are, that are involved in a business? It's been all because of other people. And I think it's the philosophy of creating a, a shared vision. Uh, not only for yourself, you need to have a vision on where you want to go. And have the ability, the courage, and the strength uh, to overcome the obstacles because there will always be obstacles that are preventing you from getting where you think you want to go. And it's being flexible so that whenever these obstacles present themselves that you go over, under them, around them, or through them. And I, and I think that mixed in, for me, it's always been about creating a culture. Um, always when I would parachute into these organizations, I knew what where they were financially, but I didn't know the people in the, in the operation. I looked at uh, the employees, and as I was speaking to them, and I did not know who the stars were. So again, treating all of them like stars allowed the people that were in whatever kind of order that the organization was in before I got there. You had these people that either spread bad news or few leaders, and usually the, the potential of an organization is much lower. I knew that if I was there, there was a reason I was there and the reason that I was hired and, and asked to be a part of that organization because it wasn't working right. So whenever I treated everyone as, as they were the stars, it's amazing at how many barriers went away and the performance levels that went up. But everyone needed to know and wanted to know where are we going and what is the vision for this organization. And when that is shared with that, with, throughout the organization, however small or large it is, then you, you remove all the barriers to performance and allow people to do things that they didn't even know they could do. If you're starting a business other than getting a lot of cash, I would say that uh, uh, believing in yourself enough that it doesn't matter what obstacles that are in your way, you'll, you'll go over them, under them, around them, or through them. And if it involves other people, understanding, seeing the best that they have to give. What personal trait would you best describe as been the staying power? Uh, what talent do you think that Charles Oglesby has that contributed to that 
to that line of succession and, and success? I think that um, I, I've been blessed with, um, with a lot of uh, gifts of insight, um, uh, a respect of people, um, uh, an acknowledgement of um, when that it's, it's not about me, that uh, my role in life is more of an igniter for others, and that the, the, great, the, the, the greater things that others do, I just get pulled right along with it. So as I looked at uh, all of the things that I wanted to be a part of and that I was a part of, it was always about the people that were around me that I surrounded myself with. So I think it was um, not being afraid of smart and strong people and always looking for someone that had more talent than I did and uh, not allowing my ego to get out front so that um, everyone else had to be below me, you know, that it was about me, but, but um, helping others. And I think that that's, that's probably one of the key aspects uh, that has helped me. Well, I, I think most of us would salute you, Charles. I know everyone in, in our audience would salute you for your tremendous personal success. Uh, and and uh, climb of the ladder at the corporate uh, at the corporate uh, level. What would you say was the largest mistake you ever made, and what was the take home that you learned from this major mistake? Well, this room can't hold all the mistakes I've made. I mean, it's uh, what I learn about mistakes. It's not the mistake. It's to make more of them. And the reason that I say that is the more mistakes you make, the more you grow, the more you learn. The problem comes when you make the same mistake more than once, that you don't learn from it. That's the killer. So it's not about making mistakes. It's also how you, how you think about the mistake. Whenever you recognize that you've made a bad choice or it, it was, as we've termed it, a mistake, then you fix it and you go on. Because what you do then is you want to think about the things you want not what you did wrong. You don't want to get that anymore. You want to get these things. So it's, it's not, it's, for me, it's how I responded to the mistakes, not necessarily the mistakes I've made. Because I, you know, like all of us, we've all made uh, plenty of them. Charles, what do you see going forward as far as the, the, the competition that comes from, you know, from the internet and from potentially you know, other reorganizations or other companies that are reorganizing under bankruptcy and, and kind of driving their costs down? I mean, how do you, how will you compete with that going forward? Well, the, the uh, social media, social networking, the internet, um, we are embracing it because that is one of the portals that um, our customers want to hear from us from. They, they, they want to use this process. Now, they still like the, uh, the touch part. They, the, we, we can almost do a complete transaction online, but they still want to take delivery of the vehicle at the dealership level. That, that aspect has not changed yet. So we are spending um, quite a bit of our resources on our IT and our development so that we are um, very competitive in that market. On companies that um, are reorganizing and restructuring from bankruptcy, that was almost us, except the bankruptcy part is gone. We, we were fortunate that we did not, that that didn't happen to us. But we became one of those companies that restructured and reorganized, and we took um, excess of $100 million of cost out of our business last year and, and restructured and, and uh, did a number of things while we were doing that. So it was a lot of balls in the air. And I think that any organization does not do that today will, won't be able to compete in the future. You've got to be able to take all the cost out that you can. Um, unfortunately, even the human capital side, the, the human side um, or productivity uh, measurements that you look at, anyone that chooses or can't uh, produce at the same level of your high performance people, you can't keep them. They, they become a drag on the organization and they lower everyone else's performance level. So I think in all aspects you've got to look at everything you measure, you've got to look at the performance side of it. And, and, and again, reorganizing, so, uh, competition doesn't bother me. It, it makes me better. So I hope that they're doing the same things we are because I want to continue to grow and get better too.